My, 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 it has been a while since I've been on the mic, and I can definitely tell you this is a crazy time to be a tech leader, anyone that is innovating, building different things, and going up against the status quo, but also it is an absolutely terrible time to take a break from content creation because so much has been happening over the last few weeks or so, and if you have not been following, I've been traveling, have been away, had an early Thanksgiving in the States, so those of you that are getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful week. And I'm just going to do a high level overview of all the crazy stuff that is happening within the space is being a leader within tech these days. Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So before I get into all of that, I just want to do a quick little summary of everything that's happening. I've been traveling. I've been in stateside. I had a early Thanksgiving, spent time with the family, went to New York, went to Florida, lost my ID. All sorts of crazy things has happened over the last month or so. And in the process, it was extremely difficult to create while I was on the road. Then when I got back home, setting up the tech and everything, and it's sort of like when you don't go to the gym for a few days, it is so hard to get back into the rhythm of things. So now I'm here. I'm fired up. I'm drinking my coffee. It is early in the morning. I am recording. I have about six or seven stories that are all lined up to do episodes, so I'll be cranking them out. But the one that really had to lead off everything, which was not even in the plans to create, was about leadership. By the time you're listening to this, you probably heard that CZ has stepped down as the CEO of Binance. Absolutely crazy times, everything that's happening with all these various leaders, whether it be the SBF trial that finally was concluded, and I could have not been more wrong with that. I didn't know exactly how that was going to turn out just because he was so well connected, funding all of these different things and uh, rubbing elbows with politicians and leaders and so forth. I was like, you know what, this might be one of those things that he gets off on some sort of technicality or time served. But anywho, that chapter is closed. Absolutely great. That is over behind us. Old news at this point, but the CZ thing now could not be any further away from what happened with that. But people on Twitter, or X I should say, are making that comparison as if CZ is the next one to fall. I'll definitely say that it is completely different. I'm not defending any of these guys. I have no shares in anything that these guys are doing. However, I will definitely say that the DOJ settlement going after CZ, saying that he was involved in money laundering and so forth and all these different things, we know that the government, the old guard, the institutions and so forth are trying to really put a clamp on this whole crypto thing. Sure, the pump with all of this ETF talk has really made the market get excited and people are thinking, oh, we're here. However, there is still a war going on. And there is a great meme out there that shows a Grim Reaper going after every single one of these exchanges and they're all getting slaughtered and so forth. And now it seems like Coinbase and Binance were the last two standing. But of course, now with this whole CZ thing, it is absolutely crazy time. So as far as saying what's going on here, in case you're not familiar, there's some great articles out there. I'm not even going to go all into that because it's much bigger than just NFTs, but crypto on a whole is that he was accused of money laundering and allowing people in Iran and various countries that have financial sanctions on them to then go through Binance using crypto and everything of that nature. So he has pled guilty to the DOJ charges and investigation that has been going on for over a year. And as a result of that, he's possibly facing as much as 18 months in jail and a $4.5 billion fine and various things. And in addition to that, he's going to have to step down as CEO. Now, not going to get into all the details of all that. You can research that. The news is constantly changing, and this is not like a breaking news show or anything of that nature. But over the last year, we have seen some crazy things happen. But I start to think of like all these different things, like these tech founders that are constantly on the move, trying to change and create new technologies and really break things. And really, it is a tough road. It is a slippery road to be on. You often have to walk the line of what is quote unquote legal and illegal, and you have to wrestle with your own moral convictions over various things. We know that SBF is the worst extreme, like the Bernie Madoff, the earliest one that I possibly know of that went down in a massive massive fault with Jeff Skilling, the former CEO of Enron. At the time, it was the biggest conviction. I think he ended up getting like 24 years, but then there's some technicalities and the way they presented the evidence and so forth. He ended up serving like 14 years, whatever it might be. But at the time, Enron was the most 
innovative company. And this guy was like a rock star, not only in the financial world, but also in the tech world and fell from grace, went to jail. Then there was Elizabeth Holmes with Theranos. If you're into this stuff, great documentaries and stuff of that. She And the idea that she had was just groundbreaking. Rather than having people being inconvenienced to do all these tests and so forth, one drop of blood can do all the tests. Well, anywho, uh, she ended up signing all of these different things with uh, various uh, pharmacies and so forth. And it was all just a fraud. Great idea. Probably 10, 15, 20 years too early. However, she wanted to rush it and it propelled her up to the top of the Forbes list and it all came crashing down. Now she's in jail. So that is nothing new. And all of these different people. Now, we're looking at the people that are also pushing the envelope, but not necessarily uh, going to jail or anything of that nature. We look at uh, Adam Newman, the CEO or former CEO of WeWork, which is now bankrupt, but he actually exited with a like two point whatever billion dollar exit. And he's doing well for himself, even though he was ousted as the CEO of WeWork, which technically is just a real estate space sharing company. However, they were presenting it as like a tech company that was going to revolutionize the world and how we work. And so that all came crashing down and all of his practices and everything were into question. Before him was Uber's Travic uh, Kalanick. They did all sorts of crazy things, meaning b- bribing officials and slashing prices and going directly after their competitors through their employees and all sorts of things. And as far as I know, he didn't serve any jail time, but he was hit with a whole bunch of fines. And just again, pushing the envelope to get Uber on every single phone and in every city. And his whole thing was like, let's break things. Let's move fast before regulators. And that took his stress on his body, the company culture and so forth. And now he is quote unquote retired. And he's a fairly young guy still. But then we have guys that are still down in the trenches like Elon, who are doing all sorts of crazy things. They're talking about actually going after him for certain claims that he has made with Tesla. But I'm not even going to go into all of that. And then, of course, Over the weekend, just a few days ago, uh, Sam Altman was ousted as CEO of OpenAI, and it's absolutely crazy what happened over there. One thing I got to say, he was fired after the markets closed on Friday, and it's like, by the time the news broke and everything, it's Microsoft moved to Hiram and he's going to be a part of Microsoft. And then we find out that Microsoft, who actually invested and owns half of OpenAI, does not have a seat on the board. A little bit weird, whatever. But then they said they have hired him. So overnight, over the weekend, no days off, Sasha Nadell, who is the CEO of Microsoft, which is a, a great CEO, if you ask me, very aggressive, so forth, said that he secured the talent and he has signed him to join on the team of Microsoft. Microsoft. So I'm like, okay, wow. Then all of a sudden by Monday morning, I'm having my coffee and I start to read, hey, guess what? Sam Altman is back with OpenAI. So does that mean he's actually in the Microsoft team and then they're integrating and putting him back in or what exactly is happening? Some board changes are being made. Was this a personality thing? Who knows? All I know is that definitely the CEO of Microsoft is not going to just take some crazy risk on some guy. They had to do his due diligence and so forth. And it was probably some sort of personality clash or something with the board. Who knows exactly what went down there? But it's just very interesting to note that Sam Altman was fired, hired by Microsoft, and rehired or reinstated within a single weekend. So that, you know, I've had a last old month or so, whatever it might be, but that is a crazy weekend. But anywho, in case you're wondering what the heck is going on, what does it have to do with NFTs, Web3, or anything of that nature? And it really comes down to leadership, right? So we're in this whole space where this tech, everything that we're building and that we are after, we're so excited about and everything, it is really pushing the envelope. And a lot of the times we have these visionary leaders within these companies, within these projects that are really pushing the envelope and getting things to move forward. So a lot of the times we put our faith and our trust in them whether it be with Board Apes, with their team, which has had a massive shakeup over the year, you just look through that, all the layoffs they've had, the founders have exited, gone on to various projects and uh, various team members and so forth. So a lot of shakeup happens within the tech space. However, there is still leadership and leadership really pushes the envelope. And when we're talking about new technology, and when I say new technology, I, I, I don't mean like this just rolled out of the gates because there's a famous quote that, or I should say, there's a quote that I absolutely love that I've put up on my Twitter and it's not from some rock star that everyone knows, but the founder of the Carib Dow, DP, has said that there are kids in high school right now that have never lived in the world without Bitcoin. 
Why is that? Because Bitcoin came out in 2009. We like to think that cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, Web3, everything is brand new. But technically, it is not brand new. Just to give you a little perspective, if you've seen this a presentation that I threw up on my Twitter feed and I put it up on LinkedIn, a couple other places... I was able to give this talk, if you will, at the University of Technology, Jamaica, and I through the one of the slides, I was able to show that the iPhone and iOS came out in 2007, Android 2008, and then 2009 is when Bitcoin rolled out. So this is not new technology into the world, but of course, the rise of smart contracts, Ethereum blockchain, and uh, NFTs and everything followed that, but it's all built on the shoulders of Bitcoin, the grandfather, if you will. And that's why I say this is really not new technology. However, it is not massively adopted technology because even grandmothers at this point have iPhones and iPads and are, are familiar with iOS and the App Store and all of that. However, the average college student, the ones that are leading the whole tech revolution, if you will, don't even necessarily have their wallets. They're not into NFTs, Web3 and all that stuff. They don't even know what's going on here. So as far as adoption goes, yes, it is new technology, but age wise, it is not. So anywho, going to the whole thing as to what these leaders are doing and how these are absolutely crazy times, we know that there is a lot being pushed because there's a lot of money that is possibly being disrupted. We have Wall Street and the banking industries. We have all sorts of different things and politicians and regulators and everything. You'd like to think that they have the people's best interest at heart. But at the end of the day, if you follow the money, you could follow where these politicians, leaders, regulators and everything goes. Because where there's money, there's an incentive for them to do certain things. And of course, their donors, their backers. A lot of these people are appointed by politicians or whatever it might be. And then the politicians are also running for re-election in their various states or constituencies or territories, wherever it might be around the world. So if you follow it back, the money is coming from bankers and entrepreneurs, big shots in whichever region it is. I'm just not limiting this to uh, one particular country, one particular region or industry or anything. That is just the way the world works, right? All the way back to knights and kings and queens and everything, follow the money. Where the funds are coming from, that is where you can see where people's incentives are, whether it be a rebelling against the uh, empire or uh, breaking away from the Catholic Church or whatever it might be. A lot of times it has to do with where the money is and the funds and everything, the power is going. And in the case of with crypto, all these leaders uh, and everything um, and the regulation that's coming, it is so hard to build within the space when there's all this regulation and uncertainty. And of course, that creates fear, uncertainty and doubt for the consumer but the leaders have to navigate all of that. But speaking of that, again, broad overview of everything that's going, just catching back up to speed. This is some really interesting time because the prices of everything at the point of recording this had a massive run up, especially over on Solana, which is very interesting because if you look at how Solana was making its run when SPF was being convicted and everything. It's interesting to see that a lot of people thought that Solana was going to die with FTX. However, we can see that it had legs of its own, a real community, real builders and so forth and everything. It had nothing to do with that. It is now having a life of its own way beyond its initial backers and investors and so forth. But anywho, the market itself ran. And it's very interesting because normally you could just line it up with the stock market and the news and everything that's happening. But it seems like things decoupled, if you will, took its own little path. And it's not even necessarily running parallel with what Bitcoin is doing, because normally Bitcoin pumps and then everything else, NFTs, everything else follows with it and rides a wave off of that. However, over the last month or two, I would say that everything is having its own little independent resurgence here and there. Things are moving a little bit differently. There's excitement within NFT space. There's builders rolling out different things, and it almost feels like a bull market. Now, I'm not going to get ahead of myself and say we're back and all the stuff that I would love for that to be the case. However, I just don't know. And I am not an astronomist, and you can uh, look at my predictions at the end of the year. I'll even speak about the predictions that I made coming into this year, where I got things right, where I got things wrong. And as you can see, we get a lot wrong. However, I can definitely say that generally uh, the good vibes are in the space. People are excited again, and I'm excited for that. So as I said, it was a 
horrible time to take that break, but whatever. It was great family spent time. Despite all the craziness and the traveling and everything that I went through, it's great to be back on the microphone, great to be back in the space. But I would love to have your feedback. If you have not already, please feel free to reach out to me on X at Tropic Vibes. Or if you're old school, you're not really into the whole uh, social media thing, which, hey, it is what it is. Feel free to email me. Shoot me a line over at mail at niftybusiness.co. Not com, but yes, dot co with your thoughts, comments, and concerns, and I'll absolutely get back to you. Appreciate you for listening to this. Appreciate you for sticking around with me as we are going into uh, these times. Looking forward to hearing anything that you have to say. So I want to thank you for listening as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.